So I saw Dune Part 2. I literally just got back home from the IMAX showing of Dune Part 2 directed by Denis Villeneuve and I thought I would come here and give you my fresh thoughts on the film uh, with no spoilers. I did a rewatch of Dune Part 1 last night and I absolutely love the first part. I remember whenever it came out most people pretty much agreed that it was great but one of the common criticisms of the film was that it was pretty inaccessible to a lot of mainstream audiences because of its more deliberate and slow pace with a lot of people calling it a setup film. And while I do disagree with that sentiment, I kind of understand what they mean. That first film did have a lot of work to do in getting you prepared for the later half of the story that Dune Part 2 is going to tell. And having just seen Dune Part 2, it succeeds with flying colors. This is an excellent, excellent sequel. Probably one of the best I've ever seen. This is a gorgeous, well-directed, well-acted, well-paced sci-fi film. And it is a hard sci-fi film. It is a weird, out there film with a crazy, dense plot with even more bizarre characters and lore. And I absolutely loved it. And I think a lot of people are going to love it as well. My man Denis directs the hell out of this movie. And I've been a pretty big fan of him for a while now. Not that he needs much of an introduction, but we're talking Blade Runner 2049, Arrival, Sicario, Prisoners. I've personally been on the Denny hype train since Enemy. Frank Herbert's Dune is kind of infamous for being difficult to adapt. We have the David Lynch version from the 80s that wasn't received very well, even though it has sort of a cult following now. It's still divided amongst fans as to whether or not this is a good Dune movie or just an entertaining, weird 80s movie. There was an attempt by Alejandro Jodorowsky to make his own version of Dune, and while that film never got made, a very interesting documentary called Jodorowsky's Dune was made, kind of going through what that film could have been, and it's definitely worth a watch if you're interested. This is not an easy story to adapt, and I really have to give it to Denis Villeneuve for making this very complex story accessible to a lot of people, while at the same time not holding their hand through a lot of it. I feel that there's going to be many people who enjoy this film, some that even love it, and still won't 100% understand everything about it, and that is okay. The experience itself is just so unlike any other that you'll want to explore this world more and you'll want to go back and see it again and pick up on the things you might have missed. The world of Dune is so massive and intriguing and mysterious, and it's been a while since we've had such a massive budget and a massive release dedicated to something so weird and unapologetic in how faithful it is to its source material. Undoubtedly there are going to be comparisons to Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings adaptations, and I feel like those comparisons are very fair. They're both based upon very groundbreaking and celebrated literature that many thought was unadaptable for a very long time. All they needed was the right talent to tell those stories and for the technology to catch up enough to capture the scale of the story. A lot of what makes this very large and dense story work are the performances of its cast. Timothy Chalamet as Paul is phenomenal. In my opinion, this is the strongest performance that I've seen him give. The character of Paul is very complex and goes through a very interesting journey throughout this story, and Chalamet is able to capture all of the emotions and the turmoil within this character very, very well. The great performances from all of the cast in the first film are carried over and expanded upon in part two. Zendaya as Chani had a very small part in the first film, and here she is given so much more to do, and through her performance kind of became my favorite character in the story. She's the one that I feel for the most, and the one that I'm most engaged with. I don't think there is a single weak performance in this cast, and I could spend most of the video just talking about everybody in the movie, but I specifically want to single out Austin Butler as Fade Raltha, he absolutely commits to this psychotic character, becoming nearly unrecognizable in the role, and he acts as a great antagonistic force in the story. When he comes on screen into any scene, there is a great presence that he carries with him, and I think that's a sign of a very strong performance. Another big star of Dune Part 2 is Greg Fraser, the cinematographer for the film, who is slowly becoming one of my favorite cinematographers ever, nailing not only the look of Arrakis and the other planets in Dune, but just a few years ago, nailing the look of Gotham in The Batman. Working perfectly alongside Fraser is the incredible visual effects in this film. A lot of the special effects are used to extend backgrounds and environments, as well as on a lot of ships and technology. It was just so well composited and well put together that none of it felt fake to me. Everything in the world felt like it belonged in that world and that's a huge key to getting Dune right. 
Of course, you pair that with some masterful sound design, and you have one of the best visual auditory experiences that you could have in an IMAX theater. That is the way to see this movie. See it in IMAX. Biggest screen possible, best sound possible. It just feels really good to get a big movie like this, where you feel like everybody in the theater is completely into it just as much as you are. Last year I felt that with the Barbie and Oppenheimer release. The difference between the two experience being that Barbenheimer was largely an internet thing where a lot of people were jumping on a trend and the two films just happened to be great on top of that trend. Dune Part 2 feels like people that are fans of the first part coming to see what's going to happen next for this story. And in terms of that story, I feel like this adaptation of Dune is going to become the definitive one many years down the line. Again, to continue the Lord of the Rings comparison from earlier, when we think of Tolkien's books, we think visually of the design of the Peter Jackson films. I feel like now whenever someone gets into Frank Herbert's novels, they're going to think of Denis Villeneuve's film adaptations. This was one of the best theater experiences that I've had in a very long time, and I'm very glad that I had it. It's just really cool to feel like you're seeing a sort of cultural phenomenon happen in real time. I'm definitely going to be seeing this movie again, and considering the hype that it's getting online right now, I'm sure many people are also going to see it again many times. This film is going to have a huge fan base, and I'm proud to be a part of it. Dune Part 2 definitely lives up to the hype. I highly recommend that you check it out, see it in IMAX, and thank you so much for sitting through me rambling about it for a few minutes. One more thing, I did actually buy the popcorn bucket before I saw the movie, and I did get popcorn in the bucket, but I took this top part off because I just, this is just one of the most impractical designs for getting popcorn. I can't think of any real reason why anybody would want this other than as a collector's item. Like, I can't imagine anything else you could do with this product. Eh, anyway, I loved Dune Part 2. Uh, thank you so much for watching my video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.